Hey guys, Dr. Dappen Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. It's been a long uh, absence from YouTube, approximately four months since I last posted. Uh, what I've been doing is been working on my Instagram, the 101.skin. Um, that's basically an information site. And I find it much easier to upload information on Instagram compared to YouTube. YouTube has great search functions. So today we'll be talking about um, acne scarring and how to prevent scars. You can find out more on 101.skin. Um, the other Instagram account is Dr. Davin Lim. That is more of a um, general skin guide rather than a specific procedural uh, type um, Instagram account. So guys, the big thing is prevention of acne scars because trust me, it's a lot easier preventing acne scars than to treat acne scars. Um, there has been recent literature reviews over the last three, four years in particular with topicals. So that includes Differin or Dapoline, which um, as you know, you can buy that over the counter in the US and certain uh, European countries. So let's go through a few things. First of all, prevention of scars. This is super important because uh, established scars, especially moderate to severe established scars, they are pretty hard to treat. Um, generally speaking, you require several treatments over months and occasionally years. When you're talking about mild to moderate scarring, sometimes if the scars are, I guess, uh, shallow, if the patient has lighter skin type, those are the ones that can be treated in one session. But that's the exception rather than the rule. So the whole idea, the basis of everything is to prevent scars, right? Now, there are several things you can use. The most important thing is this is the biggest. So if I can give you the, the best clue out there as to how to prevent scars, it's this. The correlation of scarring is proportional to the time taken uh, for effective control. What I mean by that is, is if you have acne, right? And if you pick or you have inflammatory acne, the time taken to effective control is proportional to the amount of scarring. The longer it takes, the greater the scarring. And it's not, not actual control, it's effective control. And it's not treatment, it's effective control. That's the most important thing. By effective control, it's this. For example, if someone's not a picker and they have, just to give you an example, 20 uh, pustules or, or zits, uh, and if they don't pick in that month, let's say um, 20 of them resolve, chances are you're not gonna get scarring, right? It's different for cysts. However, if you're a picker, it might even take two weeks before you uh, get scarring. So it's, it's the type of acne, but not only that, it's how you manip manipulate your acne. So if you're a picker, if you're a squeezer, the chances of scarring is a lot higher. Doesn't mean with the other types of acne, you can't get scarring. It doesn't mean that at all, but it's just a proportion of uh, patients. So let's talk about fundamentals. Can you use a cream? So everyone wants to know OTC, over-the-counter or at-home treatments. So here I go with, um, with my steel. Uh, this is based upon science, based upon research. The, uh, the use of adapalene or differin has been shown to actually not only treat acne, but also improve scars. Now, <laughs> this is a little bit catchy because uh, that, that paper or those papers were funded by Galderma. Galderma were the people who actually uh, make differin. Yeah? So I, I know there's a conflict of interest, but in all, in all truth, Dermatologists have known for many, many years, yeah, for even decades, that uh, once you get effective control, generally speaking, uh, your body's immune system actually helps repair mild to moderate scarring. So even if you do nothing, and I'll show you with a couple of picks, um, if you use anti-inflammatories, if you use that early, if you subside early, chances are your immune system can actually remodel uh, early scars. What do I mean by early scars? Basically scars that are red, pink, or less than three months old. So that's the definition of uh, early scars. And it varies from literature to literature, but that's a, a rough guide. Now, adapalene, um, in, in the context of the papers, um, it's, it's, the studies itself are good, yeah? So basically we're using um, uh, split face and we're also using uh, blinded studies. And the papers are pretty good. But like I said, even if you use first generation retinoids, so things like uh, tretinoin or use third generation retinoids such as tazarathine or Zorac, I am pretty sure that the, uh, the studies would be very compa comparable. In fact, 
if, even if you use retinol, over-the-counter retinol, because there's no, I guess, when you look at the industry, there's no interest um, for OTC products to, to undergo trials. Reason being is that they don't need trials. Trials are very expensive. So that's why, I guess, Galderma devised the trials prior to the release of um, adapalene being over-the-counter because they know that uh, this is going to extend their use of the product. Um, so once again, take that with a grain of salt. But like I said, dermatologists know, have known for many decades that early control in the use of topical retinoids can actually reduce or prevent some forms of scarring. So we talked about adapalene. What other ways can we control acne at home? You can buy benzyl peroxide. Benzyl peroxide is very cheap in the scheme of things. Um, it works as a um, oxidizing agent, so it doesn't have any incidence of resistance. Generally speaking, it's very safe, but obviously uh, contact dermatitis, especially irritant contact dermatitis, it can occur if you're using too much uh, benzyl peroxide. So you might want to start with a wash, a 5% wash as directed. If you if you have a zit, if you have a spot, what I suggest you do is you use that as a spot treatment. So um, actually, I overheard Sandra Lee, yeah, Dr. Pimple Papa. Uh, we have the same opinions. In fact, most dermatologists have the same opinions. If you have a zit, try not to pop it. If you use something like benzyl peroxide or salicylic acid, you apply it to the pimple, it does a couple of things. Number one, when you touch it, you go, go oh, geez, that's a little bit gunky. I've, I'm, I must um, remember not to touch my face or not to touch the zit. So that gives you, uh, I guess, feedback that you're manipulating your acne. That's the first thing. Second thing is that it dries out the zit. So if you have papules or pustules, the use of simple um, benzyl peroxide or salicylic acid gel to the area can dry it out. So things like Benzac AC wash or Benzac AC gel, these are cost-effective solutions, right? So we talk about decreasing manipulation, we talk about drying it out. These are actually antibacterial as well, and they don't have resistance. So which means uh, it kills P. acnes, which is the bacteria implicated in acne. So we talked about adapalene, we talked about benzyl peroxide, now we'll talk about um, salicylic acid. Salicylic acid uh, can be bought over the counter. So you can buy something like Neutrogena oil-free wash, that's 2% salicylic acid. In the scheme of things, it's very cheap, yeah? So if you can use that, especially to early acne lesions, so things like uh, blackheads, congested skin, oily skin, the salicylic acid can help. Certainly you can buy gels and they can help uh, dry things out as well. So these are called spot treatments. Most companies would have it, whether it be uh, Neutrogena or, or Paula's Choice or any of those um, companies would, would have a spot treatment. So that can actually help you not pick. Now, other at-home treatments to trial, obviously acne diet, yeah, it's super important because if you're on a high sugar diet or if you're in a, in a diet which is not the best, uh, you can have outbreaks of acne. And controlling your diet enables, uh, I guess, enable, enables you to actually explore natural remedies for your acne. Dermatologists as a whole, we don't like prescribing tablets. We don't like prescribing drugs. Um, however, if your acne is still not controlled after six weeks, um, you should see a dermatologist. Reason being, remember I said it's the time taken for effective control. So if it takes you 12 weeks to see a dermatologist from when you, I guess, um, have you know, significant outbreaks of acne, that's an extra three months, yeah? An extra 12 weeks of potential scarring. So for patients who do not respond at all, it is in your best interest to see a medical dermatologist Generally speaking, like I can't, I can't speak for all my colleagues, most dermatologists will find the most effective uh, method to control your acne based upon the clinical examinations in your past history. Which means if they see cystic acne, which has a very high chance of scarring, they may discuss um, options for you. For example, the use of anti-inflammatories, like I said, early on in the course of treatment to decrease the inflammation. Uh, additionally, Accutane or Roaccutane can be considered. Once again, it's a case-to-case -case basis, depends on your clinical findings, depends on the dermatologist, and depends on your past history. Um, dermatologists also use anti-hormone control, so things like spironolactone or drospirinone or sopratone acetate, and that can control the hormonal aspect of your acne. So once again, this can be discussed with your treating medical dermatologist. So what do derms use um, to, to reduce scarring? Certainly we use, we can start off with using simple chemical peels, the use of 
clinical salicylic acid peels or alpha hydroxy acid peels in the higher concentration can actually stimulate collagen, especially AHAs, not so much with the BHAs, but the AHAs. And that can help repair early scars. So time and time again, you'll see lots of pictures from, from me even you know, a decade ago showing all I do is to treat the acne, so I don't treat the acne now, but back then, to treat the acne, decrease inflammation as quickly as possible, and that way we can prevent scarring. Other ways that we can use include things like low level laser emission devices or LLEDs. <laughs> There's a couple of L's with that. So things like Omnilux Blue, Omnilux Red, uh, Omnilux Orange, uh, and Heal Light. You know? So we're looking at the various spectrums between uh, 633, which is the red, all the way to 810. Um, and that can actually decrease not only acne, because remember, your bacteria is sensitive to red and blue light. Uh, but also with the other wavelengths like infrared, it can actually aid in healing. So it stimulates your body's immune response to heal up scars a little bit quicker and a little bit more efficiently. Um, dermatologists also use lasers. So nowadays with the, I guess with the uh, good studies out there showing that remodeling scars early would be in the patient's best interest, we can use simple things, for example, like radio frequency microneedling, or even simpler things like derma rollers and micro pens or derma stamping. And you can try these at home as well. So I've done a couple of videos in the past showing how to derma roll safely. Most dermatologists, we advise maximum of 0.25 mil. It doesn't matter about the brand. It matters how you actually do it. So simple things like this can be done at the um, dermatology office or it can be done at home. Then moving up from there, we can have different things. For example, like sublative, which is you know uh, the marketing word for Sinron Candela's E Matrix. And then going a little bit deeper, radio frequency mi microneedling or RFM. You can be insulated or non-insulated. Most specialists nowadays prefer the use of insulated devices. I wouldn't get too um, uh, hung up about the actual brand. I mean, Lutronic makes great ones, including the Infamy and the Genius. However, even if you're specialist hasn't got a good um, system you can get around things by um, I guess delivering more shots delivering or adjusting your shots um, according to to your reaction so I guess it's more the, the provider rather than the um, device but certainly you know look free plug to the electronic because I've done a good job over the last couple of years with research and development so moving up from there things like lasers um, Early scarring can be, I guess, addressed using certain lasers like non-ablative lasers, whether it be, you know, your Fraxel or, or, or Fractora, one of the other energy devices. Um, but once again, it's getting those scars really early, right? And it's not, it's not, it's not waiting for a long period of time before they remodel. So the earlier you get it, um, the better. And that's how you prevent scarring. Now, it's an important concept to understand why do people scar? Why do some people scar and some people don't? Research has shown, so um, in the most recent papers uh, <laughs> I read over the last couple of months show that there are a few markers, right, biochemical markers. One of it is that we know from many, many years is your ESR, your CRP, yeah, which is your C-reactive protein, which is a measure of inflammation. These are much um, more or less academic because once there's increased inflammation, the markers go up, and once the markers go up, generally speaking, you have a higher propensity to scar. There are a few other blood indices you can use, but from a practical point of view, they're probably irrelevant. What we do know is that patients who have chronic inflammation, so when you have uh, acute, when you have acne, you can have the type where you have a big spike, which is inflammatory response, and then that goes down, which is good, and then you're in remission. So for the acne scar patients, it's not like the big spike. You do get a little bit of a spike, but instead of it coming down, it's basically inflammation over a longer period of time. And then it's this chronic background and inflammation that I guess increases the propensity to scarring. Um, so that's been well documented by many papers and dermatologists know that. So, you know, we, <clears throat> for, for the patients who come in with grumbling acne for many, many years, those are the ones with an increased incidence of scarring. That's why when I'm doing my revision procedures now, my scar revision procedures, and I, and I, I guess understand nowadays with the clinical papers, um, but also with experience that in order to, I guess, reduce the amount of inflammation, right? Because of background inflammation, I often use anti-inflammatory antibiotics, something like doxycycline or erythromycin. My previous uh, course was usually for a period between 
two to seven days, depending on how uh, uh, someone heals. Because when we use the emollient, or we use the, the greasy uh, moisturizing creams, especially after a laser procedure, generally speaking, uh, patients can break out because it's, uh, it's too occlusive. So that's the reason why most of us give a short course of antibiotics. But now, I've, um, I guess in the last probably six to 12 months, I've changed that to using a lower dose. So instead of, let's say, 100 milligrams, someone's on 50 milligrams. But throughout the entire scar revision process, however long it be, may be, um, a month, uh, three months, 12 months, patients are on a very, very low dose. My gut feeling is that um, this low dose of anti-inflammatories actually decreases the chance of uh, re-scarring. So we, we occasionally see that with um, subcision, uh, re-tethering, what, what we call re-tethering. But I think using this method, it's just a gut feeling that I've had over the last uh, 12 months, like I said, the number of patients uh, which uh, I guess retethers are, are less. Uh, but having said that, I've changed a lot of my methods over the past 12 months based, once again, um, not because I do it for the, fun, for the hell of it, the fun of it, it's based upon uh, both experience, but most importantly, most importantly, what's uh, said in the literature. So things like, uh, instead of using, uh, uh, I guess, small needles of bevel subcision, uh, I'm using more cannulas and even bigger uh, uh, instruments, for example, 12 gauge instruments, 14 and 16 gauge specialized instruments. But I'll come to that at a later stage. So guys, these, that's the, if I can, if there's one thing you can take away from this, one thing, control your acne effectively, control your acne early. Don't pick, give it a set time frame. There's actually a couple of things, but give it a set time frame. Take some photos, store it in your phone. Say to yourself, look, I'm gonna give it whatever, four weeks, six weeks. Try your very best to get your acne under control using OTC, over-the-counter things, home remedies, diet, the whole lot. If you still have active acne, open up your phone in another four weeks, take another photo, compare. If you still have grumbling acne, see a professional, um, see a dermatologist, hopefully, that will get things under control. A good dermatologist will get things under control very rapidly. You've got to be, I guess, have a open mind in regards to things, but most derms uh, would act in your best interest. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very short one. Well, it's not, it's actually 17 minutes. Um, I can go on for hours because <laughs> this is the, uh, I guess my subspecialty, yeah, um, acne scarring. Um, I'll do more of these videos, so acne scarring, part one, part two, part three, plus I'll add a couple more over the next couple of weeks on uh, general skincare. So guys, please comment below uh, what you want me to do, what you want to hear, what you want uh, answers to. I'm glad to answer them, and uh, also probably do a video based upon uh, the votes. Uh, for more information on things, certainly the Instagram, like I said, I keep flogging Instagram. Reason being is that I think it's easier to navigate and it's easier to deliver uh, bite-sized, important pieces of information. So when patients see me, I know exactly where it is can extract that information. It's very easy to read, especially to wa or watch with the one minute videos. But guys, I'll still keep this channel going. Uh, please subscribe, comment, share, and make all the good things grow. Bye for now.